Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today, we are finally here. This is the official, final, Spider-Man the Animated Series Toy Biz line. This is their sneak attack sub-series, The Flippin' Trap wave now keep in mind toy biz did continue making spider-man figures but it went off into the web splashers and spider powers and those type of weird off of the animated series type waves and to me that doesn't really fit into spider-man the animated series however that's not to say that uh you know, maybe we'll look at those right Leave me a comment below which ones you'd like me to start with. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But I do remember Toy Fair Magazine, and I know that Spider-Man the Animated Series ended early in the year, and these did not come out until oh, probably the end, more towards the end of 1998, so at least a couple months after the series had ended, and that's from me trying to remember all those years ago. But I remember going into Toys R Us, and they had shelves of these things, just... That's back when they used to stock shelves, in case no one remembers that way back. But yeah, just these things, they just weren't selling. And then they moved into everything else. Web Splashers, Marvel Legends, all the six-inch figures. So this, to me, truly is the end of that era of Spider-Man the Animated Series, being that it has Red Skull, even though he's not really in the right costume from the show, and then also Madam Web. And here's a look at the packaging. Now, I did have to get two of these to really kind of finalize the line, and I'm not gonna have all the weapons for these. This is just the characters, and there's a little surprise at the end. That was the best part about Toy Biz back in the day. Each line, each wave, had some kind of gimmick to it. So again, to reiterate, Sneak Attack was the most powerful and evil force the world has ever seen, has seized control of Earth's most sinister villains. It is manipulating them to carry out its diabolical scheme for world domination. The only hero standing in the way is Spider-Man. Of course, all the other heroes, don't worry about it. It will take his unique powers and weapons to defeat these masters of evil and save the Earth from total annihilation. Just like the Bug Busters. Only you can help the Sneak Attack team win. Bonus Sneak Attack sticker badge enclosed, which I love. Now you are part of the team. And for this one in particular, let's just say it's the Flippin' Trap Web Catcher Spidey, which we will see three of these, all with different decos. Let's face it, Spider-Man's got it rough, fighting the likes of the Sandman and Red Skull, because they team up all the time. Day after day can become pretty dangerous, so with his enemies getting deadlier by the minute, Spidey decided it was time to develop a new sneak attack strategy. Now with his web net catcher spring-loaded backpack, Spider-Man can snap and grab any villain unlucky enough to pop up out of nowhere, but Spidey better watch out or his enemies might start using these handy devices too. Which, spoilers, yeah, it totally does, because the Red Skull and Sandman are in this wave, along with Madam Web, so... Again, this this is like an extra cool wave, because, I mean, Madam Web's in this, and we all know how Spider-Man the Animated Series ended, huh? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, come on, John Semper, we need that animated. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice sneak attack cup of coffee. This is a look at the final official Spider-Man the Animated Series Toy Biz line sneak attack, the Flippin' Trap wave. So we'll start things off by looking at Spider-Man, three Spider-Mans to be exact. This is the web catcher Spidey, and yeah, your eyes do not deceive you. There were two other variants for this sneak attack flip and trap wave, and all very interesting, very cool looking redecos for this character, and it's nice to see them kind of throw that in there. They didn't do a whole heck of a lot back in the old Spider-Man the Animated Series Toy Biz days, like with this Negative Zone Spider-Man, that's actually pretty cool. And then you have the Night Shadow Spider-Man. Now, keep in mind, all the gimmicks are the same. All the accessories, the attachments, everything is all the same. But let's get them open and check them out. And here they all are out of their packaging. Years and years of waiting and waiting for this video to happen, right? <laughs> but like I said, yeah, they all come with the same exact accessories, same exact backpack, and it's largely, it's the same exact Spider-Man, I would argue, for all three. Same exact weird wonky stance that they're pre-posed in, but we'll take a look at the red and blues classic Spidey first. 
if anything, I would say just because of the line work and such, I mean, you could say that it's McFarlane, you could say it's J. Scott Campbell, whatever you want to pick, but he does have articulation in the arms, nothing at the hands, nothing at the wrists, nothing at the elbows. So that was it. He had head articulation, nothing at the waist, unfortunately. And he would also kick out. He had knees and he had that really early ankle rotation right there. So up down for that. But you could get him into some cool Spider-Man poses. That's for sure. It was not the articulation we have today. But hey, you know, when you got the Night Shadow Spider-Man, at least we can take a look at the backpack. But I really like the colors on this guy. Black and red with some kind of silver shading to him. It really pops and it makes him look... Like, he's Night Shadow Spider-Man, so that's cool. The backpack, lots of clear plastic here and there. Orange, reds, blacks. Got a nice net to it, and that's what you'll be flipping and trapping with right there. It has this little lever, which you pull back, and it releases this mechanism right here, which you'd flip it forward, and then you'd catch the little bug. That I'll be showing you how it works, but it doesn't really work all the time. I mean, these toys are old. They've been sitting in packages for years and years, but I like the mesh netting right here. That's cool. The design of the backpack is wackadoo, but yeah, that's that's why the Toy Biz stuff was so cool for back in the day. But he just kind of clip it around his waist, slip his head through the top, and it actually kind of gives Spider-Man like a pincer bug kind of look, which is interesting, but with the negative zone Spider-Man, yeah, same gimmick, same all around to do, but this is a very, very cool looking Spider-Man. And as you compare him to the red and blues, yeah, you see the differences here and there. Again, same exact body type through and through for all three figures, but I like the gray white on this. It's very interesting, very cool. Not quite a black either, very much a gray black, but it's painted oh so well. And when it comes to these little pink things, looks like a crane, right, from TMNT, you would simply, uh, let me just show you, this is probably better. It has a little hole in the bottom, right? And then you would push down ever so gently, just kind of hold it there for a second and let it go and boom, yeah, it pops right up. Here's a little slow-mo for you whenever he comes back down. There you go, splat. <laughs> but yeah, that's as simple as it goes. Little red thing, push down the pink thing, and bingo, bango, yeah, you're gonna catch it with this. So let's try it, let's see if I can get it the first time. Here we go. Nope, <laughs> no, nope. Ah, no. uh. uh, come on. Nope, that didn't even work. Nope. Yes, I got it. <laughs> oh my God, I dropped it. Well, anyways, you get the idea. Very cool gimmick. Now, as far as the animated series is concerned, Negative Zone Spider-Man really didn't appear on the show. Let's say Secret Wars Episode 1, kind of. But when you're actually comparing things that have come before, there was the Night Shadow Spider-Man for the KB Toys slash maybe it could have been everywhere, not just KB Toys black and red Spider-Man compared to this Night Shadow Spider-Man. So it's interesting to see. I actually do like the first version better, but I like the colors on this new Flip and Trap version. I like that metallic looking gray kind of shade to him. It's very cool. But in either case, they're both very cool figures to have. No matter which of the three Spider-Mans that you got for back in the day, classic red and blues, negative zone, or Night Shadow, I think you'll be happy with any of them. I think that the Negative Zone Spider-Man really does stand out, though, especially in an old Toy Biz collection. And I do like the fact that they went Night Shadow on this guy, but nothing beats the old red and blues. So no matter which one you pick up, you're going to enjoy this Spider-Man. And next up, we have Johan Schmidt, a.k.a. The Red Skull, which is an awesome Captain America villain. And for this video, Spider-Man. He actually showed up in X-Men the Animated Series when Wolverine and Captain America teamed up towards the end of the series for that. But in Spider-Man the Animated Series, he was the father of Chameleon and then Kragov, which he became the Electro of the series as well. And then after getting trapped in the vortex with Captain America, he actually showed up towards the end of the series again on Secret Wars. So... All those episodes really led to this figure being released. Finally, everyone's like, oh yeah, finally we got Red Skull. But yeah, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the accessories for this guy, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'll bite the Red Skull comes with a giant Red Skull catching bucket thing to catch one of the spiders. So that's pretty cool. And let's be honest, for the most part, he kind of resembles his look in Spider-Man the Animated Series, but yeah, not really. You can see the Red Skull right there. They kind of went off on their own 
tangent a little bit. It wasn't Spider-Man the Animated Series. If anything, a little bit more comic booky. But I do like this figure a lot. I think he's very interesting. I like the, he has the sculpted gun right there. Of course, that doesn't open. But he's just very much a very militaristic looking Red Skull. He's even got the Red Skull band instead of a Nazi one for obvious reasons, of course. And on the back side, yeah, he's painted well. Very simple figure, but simple articulation as well. He had it in the arms, he had it in the elbows, fisted hand on one side, and then, of course, he rotated in the head and the waist. This little piece right here, it's kind of like a hard plastic, so you can't really move his legs up more than that. But he does have knees and with some up and down articulation at the boot as well. I like his big open hand right here. That's, like, you know, power. You know, that's, that's just... That's a Red Skull voice for you right there. Not really. <laughs> Pairing him up next to, let's say, Captain America from the Electro Wave. This Captain America was always interesting. Go watch my other video. We talk more in depth about him. Very big figure. Kind of out of proportions with the Red Skull, with Spider-Man, with a lot of different characters. But this was my Captain America, and I was very to have him fight a Red Skull. And if you have Electro, of course, even though this is not the Kragov version... <laughs> This is more of the Sinister Six version, of course, from the comic books. Interesting Electro as well. And then, of course, you can have a whole family affair if you have the Chameleon. So you got Red Skull, Chameleon, and Electro. And for back in the day, for what we had, this was the coolest thing to me representing Spider-Man the Animated Series. Especially when you go into the Secret Wars. You thought I was done with comparisons and everything. You can have the whole villains team with the Red Skull and Doctor Doom and Smythe and Doctor Octopus. And you can have them against all the heroes as well. So, finally, the Red Skull was kind of like that missing piece in your Spider-Man the Animated Series slash Toy Biz collection. And I think it came out rather nicely. And then next up, we have another Spider-Man with the Web Trap Catcher, which... Kind of sounds like the other one, but with this web trap catcher, not to be confused with the web catcher Spidey, again, he has a little bucket, captures a spider, yada yada, I don't have the accessories, but you get an interesting looking blue and red Spider-Man, looks kind of like he's got like hockey pads, hockey gear on, a little bit, a little bit like electro insulation, I like the design, it's wackadoo, right? But it's kind of fun when you look at these old figures and then you look at Marvel Comics with like Spider-Verse and stuff and you think, I wonder if these had anything to do with influencing all those comic book artists now. But interesting paint all around, reds, blues, and again, nice spider symbol on the front. Interesting articulation on this guy. Head spins. He also had a semblance of ball joints at the arms. And then he also had articulation at the elbows and then articulation at the wrists. So he was, again, kind of all over the place with the articulation, especially in the waist, and he would kick out, he had knees, and he had up and down at the feet. So you get him in some cool Spider-Man poses for back in the day. Relax. But if you pair him up with, say, the negative Spider-Man, yeah, you, you see the, the difference. It's a height difference, that's for sure, especially in that. Not all the Spider-Mans were always the same height. Not everything was always the same height as you well know, for the Toy Biz days. But nothing beats the old classic Spider-Man from my collection, going from Spider-Man the Animated Series to more of the web trap catcher costume. It's still, it's an interesting Spider-Man. And next up, we're taking a look at the Sandman action figure. Not technically the first Sandman figure for the Spider-Man Toy Biz line, but definitely, I would say, the better of the two. And we'll take a look later on in this segment, but this one was sculpted by Phil Ramirez, and I mean, amidst a lot of different Toy Biz stuff, he absolutely nailed it. This looks fantastic right here. This is a great looking Sandman, and even though Sandman did not appear on Spider-Man, the animated series, movie rights, all that kind of stuff at the time, it's still cool. And I really like that they, they nailed the look of the Sandman while giving him this gimmick of the flip and trap, snap and grab arms, and <laughs> you push this little lever on the back, which activates these huge sand arms, and that's actually really cool as well. It's something different, it's something unique, but it's something that really does tie in with the Sandman, and I like that he comes with a big sand fist and a big sand mallet, and he looks like Flint Marco. So you get this little thing and you know you, you know how this is gonna go we're gonna push this down and then you're supposed to use these hands to capture this thing let's see how this goes then yep got it first time <laughs> can't even put it in his hand 
Yeah, no, I mean, Sandman's figure is great, and the backpack is fully removable if you wanted to take it off, and I love the shading on it, the sculpt detail work, everything, it's just very sandy. And for the actual Sandman figure, you still got a really nice looking toy with nice articulation to him. The big mallet hand is a lot of fun. So he's got ball joints in the arms, nothing at the elbows in any way, shape, or form. Unfortunately, that would have been icing on the cake. Head rotated, waist, and he kicked out. With nothing at the knees. He did have this sand platform foot, which made him stand with all the heavy hand stuff they did and put him up against Spider-Man, and it looks fantastic. And like I said, yeah, this was not the first Sandman figure as this other... Hydro Man repaint was part of the BJ's Maximum Clonage multi-pack, and I have a video up looking at that as well. But yeah, the <laughs> Phil Ramirez's Toy Biz one is definitely definitely the one to get. So in either sense, yeah, the Sandman, whether or not he's in the animated series, didn't matter. This was a very cool Sandman, and one that's going to look great on your shelf. And then finally, we now come to the coolest character of the wave, Madam Web. And this was a character of the Spider-Man the Animated Series show that was very integral to the storyline, especially at the very tail end of the actual show, going from Turning Point to Secret Wars to Farewell Spider-Man. This was the woman in the chair, the mystery person, and I think that they've done a good job translating her to plastic. She's a very simple figure. She's got articulation in the arms, a great sculpt on her. She will twist at the waist. She's got a bit of an articulation right there. And then at the knees, yeah, she'll fold. So she fits in the chair perfectly. But then if you also wanted to stand her up, she'll stand just like that. But it really does capture the look of Madam Web, even hearing Stan Lee's wife voicing her, if you didn't know that, for Spider-Man the Animated Series. But yeah, she's just a very interesting figure and a character that we've not seen again in plastic in any way, shape, or form. So in that sense, yeah, if you want a figure of her, Toy Biz is the way to go. Now the chair, it's not exactly screen accurate by any means, but it does the trick. It's got little rollers on the bottom of it. It's got this big net web thing up here, which is all her electronics and such, or trying to represent them at least. And what you would do is kind of pop it and make it catch the bugs as it jumps into the web. So the flip and trap wave, it, it, interesting gimmicks, but the figures were just really the way to go. Gimmicks aside, you can take them off, unplug them, whatever you want to do. But you have Madam Web sitting in her big mechanical chair, traversing the multiverse with Spider-Man. That is just cool. And plus, you know, you can roll her around on her little wheels. And like I said, when you pair her up with Spider-Man, it looks fantastic. And the one big glaring omission from Toy Biz was that we never got a Beyonder action figure. Thanks a lot, Toy Biz. How could you? But yeah, a Beyonder figure would be awesome. But the real magic happens when you get all the Spider-Man you collected over the years, finalizing with Madam Web, and you got the original Web team right here going up against Hobgoblin, Green Goblin, Kingpin, Smythe, and of course, Spider Carnage to save all of reality. Octo Spidey, multi arm Spidey, Scarlet Spidey, Armored Spidey, the Powerless One, Madam Web, and Spider-Man. Now, before we wrap things up, I feel like if you're gonna do the final Spider-Man wave, the Flip and Trap wave, well then, you really gotta look at the Flip and Trap playset. And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys, I never had this. As a kid, I remember seeing it at Target stores. It took up the whole bottom shelf. But in this playset, you could jump, swing, and climb into action. It even came with an exclusive jump and stick magnetic Spider-Man figure. And it was very cool. I mean, looking back on it now, I'm like, I don't know why I didn't get this. But, yeah, say la vie. And I have one now, which I'm going to show off for you guys. Heck, they even made a European version or a bootleg version? I don't know, jump, swing, and clum into action? Yeah, right. But having this in hand now, it is completely ridiculous. I don't even know what I'm looking at here, but it's an interesting playset, that's for sure, and you can put all your action figures on it, just like the artwork for the box, right? That's really part of the fun of having this thing. Put Doc Ock 
up here in this thing and put Spider-Man here on the thing that's going to flip and trap him up and Carnage can swing from the zip line. Lizard on the cannon. It doesn't matter. It's Toy Biz. He can do whatever you want. Venom's there, right? He's not really doing anything, but he's there. And Spider-Man is just there as well. But here's the thing about this Spider-Man, right? This was the one from the box. And they showed you, hey, look at this. And then this is the one that actually came in the box, right? So it's basically the hands is how you kind of tell these things apart. Also, it's a much smaller sort of Spider-Man compared to the other one. The other one is from the Web Flyers line. So this is the Spider-Man that comes with it. And if you notice, he's supposed to have these little magnetic shoes. I don't have those. If anybody out there has the magnetic shoes or whatever this is, let me know. I'm interested in grabbing them for you. But you'd put them on here and then you'd flip them up, right? He would flip and trap his way up to this magnetic pad on the underside of this platform. And as soon as he'd hit it, this blue web over here that's, you know, over by Venom, right? This thing right here, it would drop down and you could trap Venom. But unfortunately on mine, that mechanism doesn't work anymore. So I've kind of jerry-rigged it to stay. And yeah, so but surely you could trap Venom. Now in the case of... Doc Ock over here. He's like on this ledge that's about ready to give at any moment. But if you kind of switch the dial on the base, you flip trap Spidey up and he'll hit this part. And <laughs> this playset is very frustrating. Just FYI, you're supposed to. Doc Ock, just go in there, man. God dang. But yeah, you, you're supposed to get trapped in a prison. Like it's like the vault, right? You could do like a superhero prison or something like that. And then the door opens. I don't know, it's kind of like Spider-Man the Animated Series when Chameleon broke everyone out. Carnage over here, he's swinging from the zip line or whatever. This to me was always cool. Anything, anytime toys had like zip lines and stuff, you could attach this little piece right here, which was essentially like a crane mechanism. And you could lower the figure up and down. You could toggle the arm to which, you know, you could change the elevation and such. So... There are a lot of play features here, and especially when, let's say, you want to get Carnage off, and then you can replace it with this hook. <laughs> you can hook Spider-Man, or maybe, you know, you could hook a Spider Slayer, something to that degree. This right here is cool. This kind of simulates Spider-Man crawling up a web. This, I could be very frustrated as a kid trying to play with this. Not everything is very fluid. Everything kind of, you have to push it hard or get it going in some way. But you take old Spider-Man here and just kind of put his arms up a little bit. And yeah, you just kind of hook him in there and it looks like he's scaling the wall. And again, from a kid's perspective, that would have worked beautifully. And it still works. It's so gimmicky. It's fun. So in that sense, yeah, more of those, please. That's really really cool to kind of look at the entire place that there's stickers galore there's a little dial right here it tells you where to put the spider-man and then spin it so you can activate one thing or the other and carnage is on the floor doing nothing but just for fun i'll show you what he's really supposed to do you push this lever right here and that's <laughs> that's gonna knock spider-man right and you know what it's jackass style right but the lizard's up here he's got this cannon thing it's a spring-loaded launcher and you would push this button right here this blue thing and it would fire a missile and then the missile flies across the room and then i gotta find it for 45 minutes so there you go but it works and it's cool and the lizard's always doing stuff like that hey did you know it's also a carry case yeah so in that sense while i don't know what i'm looking at half the time for this playset, it's a carry case and it works and you could put all the pieces and it's really flimsy i mean to be quite honest with you it's not the best play set but when you have it in hand and you're going to take it over to your friend's house or something like that it's definitely cool it even comes with a little latch makes everything secure keeps it together so in that sense you open it up and bingo bango you got the flip and trap play set it's a lot of fun looking back on it now it's actually one that's kind of hard to come by believe it or not you got a special spider-man figure with it you got some web line, zip line stuff. You got stuff that falls out and shoots missiles and everything else. So if you can get your hands on one of these and you're a big fan of Spider-Man the Animated Series and you want a cool playset, yeah, this this is as weird as it is. It's a cool playset. 
So that's really a wrap on my look back at all the retroness that is Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 1990s cartoon show. While Flippin' Trap is not exactly the best wave by any means, as far as the gimmicks go, for character selection, there were a lot of gems in this and a lot of characters that we needed to really finalize some teams, really make the shelves feel complete, and what you saw on the cartoon show. So it was great in that sense, Madam Web, the Red Skull, the Negative Zone Spider-Man, the Night Shadow Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Sandman, and of course the hockey pads wearing Spider-Man. It's great to have all these figures. It's a lot of fun to look back on all of these. And by no means am I done with Spider-Man the Animated Series. I got a couple vehicles, play sets, and maybe a box set or two still to go over. And if you want to see other Spider-Man Toy Biz videos, leave me a comment below. Let me know which ones you guys want me to start with. Like web splashers or spider powers but in that sense thank you to everyone who have watched my spider-man videos over these last couple years this has been great also to finalize my collection which i will be having another video looking at that because yeah there were a few that i went back and got them and either maybe got some weapons for them here and there so plenty more spider-man the animated series to come but in the sense of going to the store and finding one in particular wave well, we've looked at them all. So I'm curious to know what you guys think about this wave. Will you be grabbing them? Do you already have them? Have they been on your shelves for years? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man the Animated Series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, have fun collecting. Because you never know when years and years later, you can pull all these things out and make videos and not only just make the videos but actually have people watch them and for all of that i cannot say thank you enough and when you do let me know what you found i'll talk to you guys soon adios